Welcome to Between the Lines with Margo, the podcast for those aspiring fast pitch softball players who want to take their game to the next level, create a legacy of leadership and respect, both on and off the field. Again, it is time to invest to be the best. All right. Hey guys, this is Margo with Hurt You, and we are with Between the Lines. We are here with Jake Schumann. He was actually my former coach and has been um, a very successful guy in the in the world of softball. He's coached at AM Corpus, Kingsville, Old Miss, Florida International, um, all the different levels. He has four over 450 wins. Um, welcome, Jake. How are you? I'm great, Margo. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. I'm so proud uh, to be on here with you. Yes. Even though um, Jake was only my coach for now, we're on first uh, first name basis. Yeah, for sure. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was my coach for three years at AM Corpus. I learned literally so much from him. Um, half of my coaching technique is is from him, and then obviously uh, what I learned from my private coaches. But um, he has great aspects about hitting, base running, um, fielding, all the things. So he is a great brain um, to pick when it comes to softball strategy, um, overall drills, and mindset. Sets. So I'm really excited that we're here today. He's actually in Michigan. I'm in Texas. Uh, we're going to go through some questions and kind of get his insight on it. So the first one is, uh, what are you most proud about um, being a softball coach? Uh, first, the most thing, uh, the most I'm proud of is the relationships that I've had to, uh, I've got to build. Uh, I've been in contact with you for, geez, over 10 years now. Uh, I've known you since you were you know, seven to 18 years old. And um, that's just something that uh, I'm most proud of. If uh, you, you go to my Facebook page and all the former players that I have and just staying in touch with them and seeing how awesome uh, parents they've become, how how great of uh, citizens in society they've become, that that's what I'm really most proud of is the, the relationship building. Uh, but on the field, and uh, I don't know if you'll remember this, but Coach Malone, the baseball coach at Corpus, said, Margo, if you don't win a conference title your senior year, uh, they're going to win it next year. And it's because Margo Hurt was here. And I don't know if you remember that, but I remember the day he said it to you. Um, and we, we, we did, you, you built that program. Um, you stuck it out. And the reason we won in 2011 was because of your leadership for three years prior to that. So uh, I'm really proud of that and what you were able to accomplish as a player and then what we were able to accomplish as a team the next year. 100%. And I, I mean, half of that is just getting on board. I got on board and I was down whatever we needed to do. I was, I was 100% down. So yeah. going into that, what are like the three main ideas um, that you have for offense, defense, and middle approach? I know what you had when I was coaching, but has it changed a little bit? Um, do you find yourself being in like a more general aspect or do you get into the nitty gritty when it comes to the seasons? Uh, I, I use the KISS method. I, I keep it simple, stupid. You know, that's something <laughs> I was taught in high school from uh, my social studies teacher. And uh, he was uh, one of our assistant baseball coaches. It's kind of resonated with me throughout my career. And, you know, I, I'm not a big um, guru, mechanical type coach. You know that. So um, I'm more of, uh, I'm going to show you how to do it because that's how I learn. I'm going to show you and then I'm going to, and it kind of molds you in that mode. But uh, I would say it's changed in that the higher level I went up from coaching in the SEC, coaching in the Big Ten, uh, coaching professionally in the MPF, um, you have more uh, resources. So uh, our quality at bats approach uh, from an offensive point of view, I want I want you to just go up there and hit the ball hard. Now, that's easy to say, but then what does that mean? That means I'm going to teach you how to hit ahead in the count. I'm going to teach you to look for pitches, uh, your pitches. I'm going to teach you to um, pay attention to the game. Uh, what does this pitcher throw? Does she only stay on her arm side or does she only stay on her glove side? Is she just a curveball get or a rise or a drop? So if you're paying attention, now you can shrink that strike zone a lot. And now it gives you a better opportunity to hit one pitch instead of 14 that are, that are coming at you. So, um, you know, as I've gotten older and I've, I've progressed through the, the stages. Um, the resources are a lot better. Um, but I think now that I'm back in high school, uh, I can, you know, I don't have the time to, to, to talk about every nu nuisance. So we'll just talk about quality at bats and how do we get there. And basically at the high school level, we're just talking about pitch selection uh, and paying attention. So 
Um, offensively, I, I, I take a lot of pride in that. I think when we were at Corpus, we led the league in hitting every year. Uh, when we were at FIU, uh, we did great things. Obviously, Lafayette was in our conference the first year, so that was really hard because uh, yeah. an offensive juggernaut. But um, And then at Ole Miss, we broke – uh, pretty much every single offensive record the year I was there as the associate head coach. So, um, and then in Iowa, we just improve them every year. So uh, it works. And just the mental aspect and constantly, I would say from a coaching standpoint, um, analyze every swing, you know, don't go five or six swings without saying a word to your, to your athlete. So, um, you know, mental approach, as far as quality at bats offensively, we're just wanting to hit pitches so that we can be successful. Uh, defensively, and you'll know this, um, I love defense. I was a shortstop in college, so obviously I love defense, but uh, I keep it simple too. Uh, we're going to work on short hops, we're going to work on crossovers, and we're going to work on getting square to the ball. So uh, those are just the three basic things for defense. Uh, I want to make the 100% routine play 100% of the time. So if it's a 14 hopper at me, I'm drilling at practice to make those plays. We're not going to sit there and drive rockets at kids because, you know, if you make that play, that's great, but it's not expected. So I want you to make 100% of the routine plays. So that's what we're going to drill and that's what we're going to practice. Uh, from a mental approach, I would say that this game is a game of failure. Uh, you're going to strike out, you're going to pop up, you're going to swing and miss, you're going to do all these things, you're going to throw the ball away, you're going to boot one. Um, you have to be mentally tough enough to say, so what, flush it and go to the next one. So uh, as a coach, um, and, and I, think, I think I've done pretty good at this as I've, I've gotten older, and probably by your third year, I was less vocal uh, about mistakes because I wanted you to be aggressive. I wanted you to, to, to get on the bases and go two extra bases. And if you got thrown out, so what? That's what we're doing. That's why we're doing it. Or if you dove on a ball and you couldn't make the play, um, it, that stuff doesn't matter to me. So um, from a mental standpoint of a coach, I'm not going to beat you down for making mistakes for going 100%. So um, that's the biggest things for me is quality at bats, make the routine play, and then know that you're going to fail every once in a while. And how do you get back on the horse and, and make that happen? Yeah. And just not sweating the small stuff. Like you said, it's a game of failure. So, you know, the, the great batting averages is 333, right? So you're failing literally 700% of the time. So um, I can definitely attest to, to coaching in that regard when it comes to um, picking your one pitch and, and just focusing on that and making the routine plays and just shaking it off. You know, I think a lot of coaches are trying to nitpick and, and get on girls. Like they're not trying when they are trying. I think the only times you really need to discipline kids on the field in a game is lack of effort, you know, energy and effort. If they're not giving that, then yes, you know, let's get on them, but they're going balls to the wall. You know, that's all they can do. They're, they're you've probably heard me say that a hundred times. Energy and effort are the only two things you can control on a ball field. You can't control umpires. You can't control uh, the pitch when it leaves somebody's hand. And you can't control the, the ball after you hit it. So uh, all you can do is hustle and, and, and do the best you can. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's that, You got to keep it simple that way. Otherwise, you, this game will just Eat tear you, you down. <laughs> yeah. And it'll spit you out faster. <laughs> So when you're looking at a player and obviously now you're in high school, so you get what you get. Right. But right. when you were recruiting, which is one of the hardest things I think for college um, coaches is that grind of recruiting skill set wise, personality wise. Um, what are you looking for in a player? Well, first of all, there, there is a big difference between a power five player and everybody else. And um, you, when you're a college coach and you're seasoned in recruiting, even if you're not, if you're an amateur and you walk up to a field, you're like, that person special. Um, besides those uh, abilities, uh, I'm looking for somebody who can run because that was my style. You know, as we hit run, we like to bunt and run. We like to slap and run. We like to do all that stuff. Um, so I want kids that are athletic. Uh, I don't care what size they are. If they can move, um, that's all I cared about. Um, from a from a offensive standpoint, uh, I'm looking for what I teach. So I'm a hands above the ball, barrel above the hands kind of coach I'm, I'm 
where you make contact on the ball is going to dictate your launch angle. It's not dropping your barrel behind underneath the ball. So uh, I'm more of a, an Alex Rodriguez type, um, you know, from my era. Uh, and it works. We're, we're going to generate power. We're going to be efficient in our swing with no wasted movement. We're going to hit long through the zone. And where we make contact is is whether to dictate backspin and drive. So um, those kinds of things are the things that I'm looking for in, in an athlete. If they uh, have a split grip or they're wide open in their stance. Uh, the, those are probably not kids that I'm going to recruit. So I would tell you um, there's a place for somebody everywhere. And yeah. no matter what, um, even if your dream school is the University of Michigan and Carol Hutchins doesn't like you, she might like you, but she doesn't like your style of play because it doesn't fit their style of play. Exactly. So that's not, not an indication if you're not good enough to go to the University of Michigan. So um, you know, find a place that's going to be good for you and fits your skill set and, and what, what they teach. Because um, the biggest thing I learned is when I went to Ball State as a player, um, they taught a specific style of hitting. And uh, that upset me. Otherwise, that's why I would have I, I went to Oklahoma State as a walk-on or something if, if I wanted to, because they taught a certain style of hitting. Um, but uh, that doesn't fit for me. So I'm going to teach the basics of hitting. And if you are close to that style, when I walk up to the field, I'm going to continue to, to recruit you. Yeah, definitely. And I think from a per a yeah, sorry, from a personality standpoint, I get to the second part of your question. Uh, I want a team player. I want somebody who, even if they struck out they're 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 going to the person on deck and they're telling them, Hey, this is what I struck. I'm on. This is how much the ball's moving, you know, look middle away, whatever. Uh, not just pout and go back to the, the dugout. I've been known to sit behind dugouts or sit next to dugouts and just listen and not even watch the game and, and just watch the three recruits that I'm there to watch. And I've crossed kids off, um, literally crossed them off my list because of their personalities or their attitudes in the dugout, either towards their teammates, their coaches, or after the game to their parents. Um, so uh, personality does matter for sure. Definitely. I think that's a really great point to make like the skill set and the personality It has to all meld together to be in that program. And it's just too late in the game to take a swing, deconstruct it, and then make a new one at the college level. There's just not enough time, you know, and that's a six to 12 month process. And if you need someone to produce the next year, it's, that's not something that you're going to willing to risk, you know, your job and your, you know, your win record on. And it's like you said, it's not like, they're not good enough or that they don't have the skill set. You do. I just want to coach the people that I'm good at coaching and you don't right. fit that mold. You know, yeah, I made that comment the other day, like as a college coach, I get to pick who I get to be around every day. And um, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. As a high school, like you said, you get what you get and then you just try to form them the best your ability. And, you know, a lot of those kids in high school, they're, they're there for the social aspects, which is okay. And I have to understand that, but they're also coming to practice to try to get better too. So right. um, I have to do my job. Yeah, definitely. So now on the high school, <clears throat> the high school level, how do you motivate those players? How are you trying to get them to, you know, stay energized, stay focused on the ultimate goal? Well, the school that I'm at has, I don't know, they've, they haven't lost a conference game in like five years. So that's what motivates them. But um, uh uh, you, you know, I'm not much of a rah-rah guy, you know that. So yeah. um, it's really, it's hard for me because I was always intrinsically motivated and I always felt like you go back to recruiting personality. I want those kids that also are intrinsically motivated that I don't need to be a rah-rah person with. But how do I motivate? Um, I started putting posters up. I think uh, when we got a new locker room at, at Corpus, we took pictures of our players and we made accessories like determination or, you know, just our key words that we use loyalty with a little quote and a picture of our team or something like that. And I did that at Corpus. I did that at FIU. I did that at Ole Miss. Um, and then, you know, in our locker room door, the road to Oklahoma City starts through here. So, you know, just constantly reminding them what our, our core, our core, um, personality traits are our core our, our core team traits and then what's the destination and uh you know because it's 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 something that they have to remind oh we we're playing for a conference championship or we're playing to get into the ncaa tournament you know and that, that gets lost in the shuffle sometimes so uh what whatever level it is you know have your core your core beliefs uh remind the kids of that and i feel like that's a great motivation to to be who you are 
Well, it's a long season, right? So college is like 50 something games and it is kind of hard to stay focused and the eye on the prize because the games kind of, you know, become one and the same. It's like you play the same person three times in a row. So that is kind of hard. I think it's easier to stay focused in high school to, to an ultimate goal because you're playing one game a day, you know what I mean? And it's more social. It's more of an event. Um, I think in college, it gets kind of lost in translation because of the repetition. So, um, so um, I was just wondering, the last question is, what would you change about the game? What would you want to see maybe better or, or just different in general? Yeah, there's a couple things I'd like to see change, but one I control, can control, one I can't. Um, actually, I can't control either one of them because, you know, I'm just <laughs> a nice guy here in Michigan. But um, the first thing that I feel like I could control or have a voice in if somebody called me and asked me, uh, because I have coached in the, in the pro league, and have a pretty good feel for it. I'd like to see uh, Major League Baseball get involved uh, with uh, forming a pro league instead of all these dot pro leagues around the country. Um, it, it, I feel like uh, if they took a model like the, the NBA has with the WNBA, I think that pro softball would be through the roof. I mean, right now, uh, college softball is the number three watch sport on TV. And y- y- that's obvious that people love it. And with the amount of girls that are participating softball these days, I think a pro league backed by major league baseball would just be through the roof and outstanding. And um, that's something I'd like to see changed. Um, A college game. I love it. Uh, I miss it. Uh, Everything about it, the travel, the camaraderie, the TV, the everything. I love it. Uh, Wouldn't change a thing. Uh, The one thing I would change is I think that what's a little out of control is uh, kids entitlement. And uh, I, you know, since I have this mic, I would say that this game owes you nothing. Uh, you owe the game everything. And if you're not picking the right coach or you're not picking the right program, um, that's your fault. And if you're sitting on the bench, um, work harder, get better, uh, beat somebody out. And um, this this stuff about, you know, players on the bench that are, you know, telling coaches and, and telling administration that coaches are abusing them because they're not playing is getting out of hand and then the entitlements is crazy. Uh, I got a lot of good friends out there. There are a lot of good people um, that are doing the best they can and are great coaches, but because somebody, you know, was always the best player and probably went on four or five travel teams because they weren't playing on the other one. And then now they went to college and it's the same thing. And um, the entitlement part, I would change that because softball's getting out of control with it. But those two things are the only things I would, I'd like to see changed. I love this game. Um, I think it's amazing. It's fast. Uh, it can be exciting at times. And um, I wouldn't change anything else about it. Yeah, definitely. So do you have a call to action? Do you have like a camp coming up in the summer? I know you and your wife are, are definitely seasoned coaches and y'all do some stuff on the side. Are y'all doing anything like that in the in the summertime? Well, we've tried to partner up with uh, campus sports tour, tours out of Miami. My, my buddy Lonnie Shapiro down there is trying to get the, his company off off the ground and uh, with all the shutdowns this last year, um, we weren't able to do it. And what it is is basically uh, kids pay to go on weekend uh, campus tour trips. And we're going to do uh, campus camps in conjunction with the tours. So that's uh, cool. Yeah, it's awesome. The, the model is unbelievable. He's got it. He's got it. Um, he's got it trademarked and everything. It's pretty awesome. But so the model is basically you go on a we're going to probably do middle of the week because we'll try to do it in the end of the summer if we can get it off the ground and campuses up here are going. But uh, you'll go to a, an NAIA and a D2 on on Tuesday. Then you go to a D1 and an NAIA on Wednesday. And then maybe a D1 and D2 on Saturday and end it. And each day at one of the two places you're working out so that that staff is watching you or other coaches can come in and watch. And we put them wow. through a con- Put them through a combine type thing and then they do the campus tour and meet with academic advisors and all those things so you're really knocking out six unofficial visits in a three-day span um you're on a bus you're in a hotel so you're getting that college like i'm um, playing softball friend for for a three-day weekend so um, i love yeah. that i love yeah, that. it's awesome look it up campus sports tours um Right now it's in Florida, Michigan. He's looking to expand in every other state. So uh, give him a call and see if you can get one going in Texas. But, um, you know, right now we've had some external shutdowns of some campuses. So as soon as we can get that going, I think my wife and I, we're going to try to get that going uh, sometime maybe in August before school starts again. 
That's amazing. That is a great program to be a part of. Um, awesome. Well, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments for Jake, please put them in the bottom and we will get back with him to answer those questions. Jake, thank you so much for being here. And don't forget to invest to be the best. Thanks, Margo. Thanks for joining us on Between the Lines with Margo. This podcast is brought to you by Hurt You Fast Pitch Softball. Hurt You provides instructional videos and video analysis for those fast pitch softball players who want to build their skill set and achieve their goals both on the field and in life. Always invest to be the best.